Hi, it's Leonie Blackwell here to share the next rich habit with you. We reached the halfway mark last week, so we are now up to the final five habits. So just to recap what it is that we've discussed so far. Rich habit number one was all about replacing your bad habits with some good, healthy, productive ones. Rich habit number two was about goal setting, so that's having daily tasks, you know, things to do each day that lead towards goals that you've set either for the week, the month, for the next three or four months, or into the year or longer than the year. So you're breaking it all up and working towards achieving those goals. Rich habit number three was all about self-improvement. Watching this video is part of that. Reading books, watching webinars, watching information, reading journals and things to do with your business so that you can improve your life, your work experiences, as well as enhancing your skills and abilities. In rich habit number four, we actually discussed health and how important it was to eat well, as well as doing some regular exercise. And then last week in rich habit number five, we asked you to start to dedicate some time each day to build healthy relationships. Now this week, we're looking at rich habit number six, which is all about living each and every day in a state of moderation. Yes, that's a little bit fun, isn't it? <laughs> Because the bottom line is we don't really live in a moderate world. We really don't. And I think that's the first thing that we actually have to understand that we don't see it in the media, we don't see it in movies, we don't see it in magazines, we don't see it on anywhere in our world. And very few families ever teach children how to live moderately because of the pressures and the stress and the need to work and the the fears that and all that stuff just means that in fact we are uh, absorbing all the time this degree of rush, pressure, push, go, go, go all the time. It's not enough. We need more. We need more. We need more. That's not a moderate life. Okay. And then aha, we have this little thing called an amygdala in our brain in the emotional brain back here, and it is a massive drama queen. It doesn't want to do moderation at all. So we actually have to work at being moderate. We actually have to learn about being moderate and put effort into being moderate because it doesn't just happen. That's the bottom line, it really just She actually wrote a book called uh, Facing Codependence, and in that she actually named five qualities that exist in someone who's a codependent. And the fifth one was actually the inability to experience or express their reality moderately. So sadly that actually means that if we don't know how to live moderately, we're going to be experiencing and expressing aspects of codependence. So to live in moderation basically means living a balanced life. And that's kind of pretty much like no real extremes. So successful people do understand the need to be on a level king, a level um, playing field to, to be able to moderate the way in which we use our energy, the way in which we manage our lives. Okay, now I don't use the word control because I think control has a negative thing in the way in which it kind of what it would do in terms of our brain. But if we effectively learn how to manage our lives, our emotions, the way that we think, then that is definitely part of the process to becoming a more moderate person. So we need to have like a moderate mindset in that kind of way. All right. And we know somebody who has a degree of moderation about them because we find them quite easy to be around and quite comfortable to deal with. We almost trust them innately because there's a calmness that seems to just be there because they know how to moderate themselves. And that's a really important part. Now, I'm gonna put my little twist on this. I don't actually think there's one single expression of moderation, all right? I actually think that there's actually our own personal place that we have to find that is our middle ground based on our different personalities. And we all do have different personalities and different expressions of how we turn up in the world. For a long, long time, I've, you know, in my 20s and 30s, people would always go like, oh, I look forward to the day when you're all chilled out and all really, you know, moderate and blah, 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 right? And it's like, oh, I'm just passionate. I mean, passionate personality. And what I started to learn was that if I was a passionate personality, my place in being moderate was not the same as somebody who had a different personality to me. And I think as, as the years have progressed, I've found my level of moderation. And that may be that I work 
and go at a pace a little faster than some and I have people go I don't know how you do what you do but if I go slower than that I'm kind of like bored out of my tree with like okay what am I supposed to do now so I've found my place of moderation and that took me time to find that but it feels nice to be in my place so somebody who was say classified as very laid back their place of moderation would be very different to where my place of moderation would be. But there's always a chance too that if they're too laid back, they actually might need a big kick up the butt. They need a bit of oomph into their life to actually be a bit more motivated by things. So it really is about finding that balance. We need to be motivated. We need to be driven. We need to have joy and passion in our lives. But we need to do it at a point where it doesn't drain us and it doesn't exhaust us. And that is what I'd have to say that I most definitely experienced in my own world was that all of that passion was exhausting, that I went too hard, I went too fast, I pushed too much. And so I had to learn how to work with that energy in a different kind of way. Now, I used a flower essence to teach me that. At the time, of course, I didn't have my empowered tapping to be able to do it, but I will share that with you today as well. But the flower essences that I used, I love using it when I have with clients as well because it's one of my favorite things to actually help my clients find and develop their own sense of moderation. And so that flower essence that I use is called Macrocarpa. And I put it in a mix, but basically Macrocarpa is the core part in that mix about moderation. It's an Australian bush essence and it helps us learn and it teaches us how to find that place. Now with flower essences, if you don't know much about them, flower essences have both a positive expression and a state of imbalance. And we take them usually for the description around where there is an imbalance because what it does is it helps clear that imbalance and bring us back into alignment to who we truly are. And that's what I love about flower essences. They cannot make you be anything you are not but they do clear the blockages so that you can come back to your own truth. All right, so when macrocarpa, we take macrocarpa, what actually happens is if we are feeling a bit worn out and tired and stuff, but we need, but, but we've got energy, we've just kind of maybe misused it a little bit, macrocarpa will draw in that energy and help give it to us so that we can actually get done in our day what we need to get done. So it gives us more energy when it's there and it's appropriate. If we're pushing ourselves and we don't need to push ourselves that hard, we'll actually get this sense of being tired, like enough's enough, we need to stop. And so when we do listen to that and go, okay, let's stop, then what we actually know is where we start to observe ourselves and learn where there's this way, I guess, if you like, to use our energy. So when I first took macro carpet that's what I experienced and it was a Tuesday afternoon and I had a million and one jobs to get done before the next day or before I least started work and saw clients the next day and I was feeling really tired and worn out and and I was like no no I've got to push through I've got to get these done and it was like this little voice in my head just went nah, maybe not let's just go home and it's like no no I really have to get this done because I was push 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 right and so I was like and there was like, no, Leone, go home, right? And so I kind of stopped and went, I am actually really quite tired and my brain's not really in the best place to get this done. Maybe I'll just go home and just chill. I've had a big day, let's do that. So I did. And the funny part was when I got home, I kind of had got energy again to do stuff I needed to do at home and to actually like be present to the relationship I was in at that time and, you know, all that stuff. So it was kind of like, wow, okay, that's interesting. I was at work and felt like I couldn't even keep my eyes open. And yet I got, I, when I got home, I had energy to communicate and connect and, and all those sorts of things. So I got to work the next day, fresh, bright, sparky, right? Boom. I got the long list of things. I got them done in faster than I could ever imagine. Like within probably half an hour, I had completed what probably would have taken me two to three hours the night before. Not because it needed to take that long, but because I was so tired and I was pushing myself that I was not at my best. And so when I did and I went bang, bang, bang and got them all done, I just stood there and went, oh wow, I really don't use my energy well. I 
burn it up too quick and I, I waste my energy. And so that for me was like, I fell in love with Macrocarpa. It was just like, oh my goodness, I really got to learn how to be different. And I love those opportunities. So basically I took, and I'll be honest, put my little hand up here. I took Macrocarpa for about the next 18 months. I'm not sure I needed to take it for 18 months. I definitely think the, the lesson had been learned and I had re educated myself in how to manage my energy effectively each day but I just wanted you know to make sure I didn't slip back so I did it for a bit extra but I think about 12 months was really you know that consistency of just really relearning and relearning because at that point in time oh well, my guess I may have been maybe early 40s uh, I had spent a whole like my whole life pushing 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 and and you know love thank you parents for all that, that I learned but my dad was a real he really in, instilled this drive in me and that drive was great because I got a lot of things done so thanks dad I love that but I came to a point past macrocarpal where I realized that there was a way in which I was doing that was not healthy and it wasn't true to who I really was. So I had to relearn that and connect into my truth and express my drive and my passion and my, you know, me, my little personality in a way that was more moderate for me. So I love flower essences and if you kind of like go, oh, I'm kind of interested in flower essences, I do have a course if for any reason that you're interested in that, I will post that below and you can have a look at it. So just to sum up, okay, successful people do everything in moderation. They sleep, they eat, they exercise, they work, they play, they socialize, they love, they communicate, they relate to others moderately. Now, I will admit that I did once think the concept of moderation was just meant that now you just want to like chop off like my limbs and make me boring and and that's not just and that may actually be insensitive and I just realized that that I didn't mean that in a rude way of people who have injuries god now I feel awful that's not what I meant I meant as in like trouble actually I wanted to say chop my head off and like lose myself like maybe I should have just said that anyway now I'm just I apologize so I just meant like I just felt like part of me would be removed so if you're anything kind of like that you would understand like it'd be feel like to be moderate may feel like it's boring but moderation doesn't mean having no personality and no changes in emotion it really is about it, it means thinking through your responses it means being consistent it means being true to who you are in every moment and not like lashing out and, and then having to save face because that kind of behavior is really what we talk about as being living in extremes it's learning how to effectively manage yourself and your personality because taking responsibility about how you show up in the world is actually what we're here to do and it's very much part of these rich habits. So without further ado, let's get into some tapping. All right, so this is called Living in Moderation and I will post it underneath this after it's gone live. All right, starting at the top of the head and repeat after me. Even though it's normal, to want to live in moderation. Eyebrow point, my mind can't just let it be normal. Side of the eye, it has to create it into an unmet need. Underneath the eye, this triggers off my fear responses that I can't find my sense of moderation. Top of the lip, this then sets off a cascade of emotionally painful experiences in my mind's reality. Chin point, but it's not how my life really has to be. Collarbone point, it's just my fears running stories from my past. Underneath the breast, the right hand side, I don't really need certain conditions to exist for me to live in moderation. And underneath the arm, and I don't need specific circumstances to exist for me to live in moderation. I already am willing to live in moderation. Taking a nice deep breath. <sighs> Top of the head. Even though it's normal to want to live in moderation. Top of uh, the eyebrow point. My mind can't just let it be normal. Side of the eye. It has to create it into an unmet need. 
underneath the ice, this triggers off my fear responses that I can't find my sense of moderation. Top of the lip. This then sets off a cascade of emotionally painful experiences in my mind's reality. Chin point, but it's not how my life really has to be. Collarbone point, it's just my fears running stories from my past. Underneath the breast on the right hand side, I don't really need certain conditions to exist to live in moderation. And underneath the breast on the right, underneath the arm on the right, on um, whichever side you want really, it goes both sides, you just don't have to do both. I don't really need certain, I don't need, and I don't need specific circumstances to exist for me to live in moderation. I already am willing to live in moderation. Taking a nice deep breath. Alright, top of the head. By interpreting living out of balance as being about me, I have created a belief that I can't find my sense of moderation. Eyebrow point, that belief that I can't find my sense of moderation then colours my experiences so it feels like it's true. And side of the eye, but it doesn't have to stay true. Underneath the eyes, by interpreting living out of balance as being about me, I've created a belief that I can't find my sense of moderation. Top of the lip, that belief that I can't find my sense of moderation, then colours my experiences so it feels like it's true. And chin point, but it doesn't have to stay true. Collarbone point, by interpreting living out of balance as being about me, I've created a belief that I can't find my sense of moderation. Underneath the breast on the right hand side, that belief that I can't find my sense of moderation, then colours my experiences so it feels like it's true. And underneath the arm, but it doesn't have to stay true. Taking a nice deep breath. Top of the head. By interpreting living out of balance as being about me, I've created a belief that I can't keep my emotional responses in moderation. Eyebrow point, that belief that I can't keep my emotional responses in moderation. Then colours my experiences so it feels like it's true. And side of the eye, but it doesn't have to stay true. Underneath the eyes, by interpreting living out of balance as being about me, I've created a belief that I can't keep my emotional responses in moderation. Top of the lip, that belief that I can't keep my emotional responses in moderation, then colours my experiences so it feels like it's true. And chin point, but it doesn't have to stay true. Collarbone point, by interpreting living out of balance as being about me, I've created a belief that I can't keep my emotional responses in moderation. Underneath the breast on the right hand side, that belief that I can't keep my emotional responses in moderation, then colours my experiences so it feels like it's true. And underneath the arm, but it doesn't have to stay true. Taking a nice deep breath. Top of the head. By interpreting living out of balance as being about me, I've created a belief that I can't control how I think. Eyebrow point. That belief that I can't control how I think then colours my experiences so it feels like it's true. And side of the eye, but it's not true. Underneath the eyes. By interpreting living out of balance as being about me, I've created a belief that I can't control how I think. Top of the lip, that belief that I can't control how I think. Then colours my experiences so it feels like it's true. And chin point, but it's not true. 
collarbone point. By interpreting living out of balance as being about me, I've created a belief that I can't control how I think. Underneath the breast on the right hand side, that belief that I can't control how I think then colours my experiences so it feels like it's true. And underneath the arm, but it's not true. Taking a nice deep breath. <sighs> Top of the head, by interpreting living out of balance as being about me, I've created a belief that overworking is just normal. Eyebrow point, that belief that overworking is just normal. Then colours my experiences so it feels like it's true. And side of the eye, but it's not true. Underneath the eyes, by interpreting living out of balance as being about me, I've created a belief that overworking is just normal. Top of the lip, that belief that overworking is just normal. Then colours my experiences so it feels like it's true. And chin point, but it's not true. Collarbone point, by interpreting living out of balance as being about me, I've created a belief that overworking is just normal. Underneath the breast on the right hand side, that belief that overworking is just normal, then colours my experiences so it feels like it's true. And underneath the arm, but it's not true. Taking a nice deep breath. Top of the head, I'm letting it all go. Eyebrow point, I'm letting it all go. Side of the eye, I'm letting it all go. Underneath the eyes, I'm letting go of all that no longer serves me. Top of the lip, I'm letting it all go. Chin point, I'm letting go of all that no longer serves me. Collarbone point, I'm letting it all go. Underneath the breast on the right hand side, I'm letting go of all that no longer serves me. And underneath the arm, I'm letting it all go. Taking a nice deep breath. And top of the head, the only truth is, I already am willing to live in moderation. Eyebrow point, I already am willing to live in moderation. Side of the eye, I already am willing to live in moderation. Underneath the eyes, I already am willing to live in moderation. Top of the lip, I already am willing to live in moderation. Chin point, I already am willing to live in moderation. Collarbone point, I already am willing to live in moderation. Underneath the breast on the right hand side, I already am willing to live in moderation. And underneath the arm, I already am willing to live in moderation. Taking a nice deep breath. Now before I started that tapping, I had already decided that when I got to work, I was actually going to get out crab apple, which is a bark flower essence that actually helps you when you feel like you wish the earth just swallowed up because you said something that you feel kind of embarrassed by saying because it kind of came out without really thinking through the impact that it would have. But having tapped that just now, then I actually feel a lot calmer so that I don't feel, I mean, I, I apologize that it sounded wrong. It was not my intention, but I feel a lot more balanced around the fact that it wasn't my intention. It slipped and I caught it as soon as it came out of my mouth, which is a, a good sign that I'm at least aware enough to notice as I, you know, blurt something out that maybe I needed to think about how I was saying it. So that, may, that just shows how just using tapping by itself can really shift the way in which we feel and bring ourselves into a space of moderation. But flower essences are beautiful. I do, most of any, all of you who are my clients all know that I combine the tapping and flower essences together. So flower essences can actually help and I often will work with mixes of flower essences in around the theme so that they can dig in deeper to whatever theme we might be working with with the tapping to get depths and really peel into more layers with the tapping. So flower essences and tapping go beautifully together. But if you ever have those moments where you uh, feel like you just wish the earth, earth could swallow you up because you kind of like said something you did that didn't sound the way you wanted it to say, crab apple from bark is really good. Otherwise, 
save this video, go grab it and tap this again because it will chill you back out as well. All right. That's it. Thank you very much. Please, if you do want to share, you can. You are most welcome to share this to your pages. There's no problems about that at all. It is here aiming to just give you some you know, life skills and some insights and some tapping sessions and some experiences. So thank you for joining me either now or later when you're watching it and have a beautiful day. All right, take, take care. See ya.